Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. Did you see that brand new open? Matt Finkel. <laughs> Matt Finkel is in it. For everyone who wonders, who is this Matt Finkel they always talk about? He was in the open. Nice to see him. I am Jennifer Beck, Andy Lynch, Mark Kuntz. Matt Finkel's actually backstage, so he's here with us as well. And we're happy to have you joining us as we work through the final week of January. That means it's going to get warmer, right? And then it'll get colder in a few months after that, but that's just how the seasons go. <laughs> Sometimes Mark doesn't need to be so practical. Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebrated this past January 19th. Around the same time in Lima, a special event taking place, including the annual 6th Ward Awards Banquet. Today we'll have a special story from that special event. Also today, it doesn't matter if you've been married four months, four years, or 40 years. God wants to strengthen your marriage right now. Zach and his wife Hannah. Talk with a local pastor about a thrilling upcoming marriage conference you won't want to miss. Plus, it's food day. We're celebrating one of the national food holidays. Jennifer has all 736 <laughs> national food holidays on her phone and so her calendar. So that means there's two food holidays every day. That's not much of a holiday. Why aren't we doing two food segments today, Jennifer? Do you realize there's not just about a thousand food holidays? There are so many other holidays like the National Scratch Your Ankle Day and... Uh, now, do you have to scratch your own ankle or can day? anybody scratch anybody's ankle on that day? Because I'm not a fan of ankle <laughs> anarchy scratching. Well, let's cancel that segment. I guess that's not going to work out. <laughs> Shorter show today, so enjoy what we have left. <laughs> let's take a look at our scripture for today. It comes from John 6, chapter 6, verses 50 through 51. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. And I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Something to think about uh, today. As uh, we mentioned, we do have some eating segments, but they're much more important bread to discuss, uh, the eternal bread, the eternal food of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the bread of life. You know, Jesus also came for all. And the message of equality, the message of hope, and of a saving faith were all included at the recent Martin Luther King Jr. events held here in Lima. On January 19th, the annual MLK Day Breakfast, also a special walk was held that day. But then on January 18th, the day before, a packed crowd gathered at the Lima Tower for the annual Sixth Ward on Awards. These are the honorees. The Alberta Shirelds Award went to Onita Cobb, the Larry Watkins Award to Thomas Jones, Dolores Averett was honored with the Rosa Parks Award, Jacqueline Sage received the Georgia Newsom Award, Scott Frenger honored with the Furl Williams Award, Robert Johnson, Law Officer of the Year, George Wall, Firefighter of the Year. The Martin Luther King Keep the Dream Alive Award was presented to Jamie Dixon. And the Mary Coleman Award went to Claytonia Manley Logan. Claytonia Manley Logan, that's a name that you may have heard of here on TV44 in the past, being honored with the Mary Coleman Award. Just one of the many reasons Claytonia is giving thanks these days. Mark has more. She's a walking daily testimony of how God can restore and renew. Pastor Claytonia Manley Logan, recipient of the Mary Coleman Award, gives God all the glory. Honored at this year's Martin Luther King Jr. Day 6th Ward Awards Banquet, Logan was responsible for a program this past summer designed to open the doors of the church and take it to the streets. Over the summer, I um, had a, uh, a program that was on the south side of Lima on the corner of 3rd and Main. And what we did was uh, bring, uh, take come out of the church and take church to the street. And what we did was we uh, provided free food, free entertainment. We had people come in and that uh, said a word or two con uh, concerning uh, where the struggles that they had been through and where God had bought them from. Why take the church to the streets? Logan says the answer is simple. Because a lot of people that uh, are in the streets or they don't, that you wouldn't find them, they wouldn't frequent a church. So what you have to do is do what Christ said. He said go out and, 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 and serve the people and meet the people where they're at. It says go out into the highways and the hedges so that we could preach the gospel and it would compel them to come. So we first have to be servants and go out into the streets and preach the word of God. Logan knows that the message of Christ's love comes in many forms. And for her, one of those natural forms is music. This local pastor is also a gospel singer, and if you have not yet had the chance to hear her sing, your opportunity is coming. Uh, I'm uh, about to have an album released, and it's called Finally, and it's, it is really speaking volumes to how I feel. Finally, I get to uh, share my gift that God has given me with the world, so uh, 
in March. The album will be coming out, and I'm just very excited. I got, you know, going to different places and singing, and it's really just a form of ministry and spreading the Word of God through song. Pastor Claytonia wants all to know that you can have your finally moment too. There is nothing in your past that can make God love you less, regardless of what anyone might want to say. People will write you off because of where you've been and the things that you've done. But God looks at you and he sees you in your finished state. So uh, I didn't expect it, but now I'm expecting everything and anything because he said that thousand cattle up on the hill, they belong to him. So therefore, I am an heir to that. So I'm excited and I believe that anything is possible. Stay with us at the end of Faith and Friends. We'll take you back to the awards event for some special music from local musician Timothy Carter, better known as MC Righteous. That is worth it, I tell you that. <laughs> well, if you are married, then this next interview is for you. If you're not married, then this next interview is still for you because you probably know someone who is married. And maybe they or you need to hear this information. There's a marriage conference coming to town. Zach and his wife Hannah are with the local organizer to find out why this is an event that should be on the definitely need to do this list for local couples. Well, thank you, Mark. The Art of Marriage presented by Family Life and hosted right here in the Lima area by Faith Baptist Church in Elida and Pastor Tom Cooper, who's joining us now. Pastor, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having us. An exciting event coming up into this area that a lot of couples, I think, are going to want to know about the art of marriage. Give us just a brief overview of this marriage conference that is coming up. It is exciting, Zach. We have a, a conference that begins on Friday night. It's a video-based conference, so the uh, speakers on the videos are well known mm. and uh, excellent in presenting the material and uh, begins Friday night at 7 o'clock and it finishes right at 9 o'clock and then again on Saturday morning at 9 and it ends at 4 p.m. It is a terrific event. Couples come and they learn about the art mm. of marriage. Well that's a, a good point. I wanted to go to that first. The title itself, The Art of Marriage, because it is an art and, it, and I've seen listed in here it talks about kind of the dance that it is and the art form um, that you have to take on to really have a successful marriage. Sometimes I've said kind of jokingly, my wife and I have been married for 29 years come uh, this May mm -hmm. and uh, I love her. I don't want to take anything <laughs> away from that. But if I were to do it all over again, and I certainly would, but uh, standing at that altar this time, mm -hmm. now knowing the complexities of marriage is the challenge of marriage, I'd still have that smile on my face, but maybe not this grin <laughs> yeah, that I sure. had for the first time around. Sure. Yeah. And uh, this art of marriage really is about that, a picture of standing at the altar and you have uh, a new husband and a new wife standing at a canvas and uh, she's holding a brush and he's holding a paintbrush mm -hmm. and uh, together they have to make something, a beautiful piece of art. Mm -hmm. And uh, God gives us the supplies we need he gives us the ingredients or the, the paints and the mm -hmm. colors and the textures and all that we need, the concepts there, but we need to follow his direction and together work and produce that masterpiece that mm. God wants. Our marriages aren't finished. The masterpiece isn't right. done. And so we continue to grow, we continue to learn and just celebrate what God has offered us. Yeah. It's uh, very neat to hear about this and to be talking to you beforehand. We spoke of how that this was, um, you kind of did a trial run earlier yeah. this year. What sort of art came out of that trial run? Well, we offered it first uh, just to our church family, uh, a few couples uh, to come, primarily for uh, my wife and I to have the practice of being able to present hmm. this conference. And uh, the four couples that came, it was four or five couples involved, and uh, they all really, from a, and there was a, uh, quite a, uh, a, a good group of people, a difference in a variety in, in the sense of we had people who were just married just a couple of months hmm. to a couple who've been married for, I think it was uh, almost 30 years. Oh. And uh, they all benefited from it and, uh, and expressed that. Some of them were uh, working on some, some struggles and so they came knowing and hoping that this would help. Mm -hmm. And others said, well, I don't really know what I'm getting into, but benefited because it said, things are going great at our marriage, but we wanted to celebrate and just kind of recommit to what God sure. has called us mm -hmm. to. So. Well, let's talk about what couples can expect 
from this that once they sign out, they sign up. There's a fifty dollar um, sign up fee for both the husband and the yeah. wife, but that includes a workbook, right? And then there are actually six sessions, and you have yeah. one here. I do, and that fifty dollars is all. That's okay, the registration, feet. and that's all there is to it. There's no more once you arrive. Yeah. And it does include everything except for meals. Okay. Uh, we do provide some wonderful snacks and that sort of thing during the breaks, but on Saturday, there will be a lunch break. Okay. And uh, so folks will be able to leave uh, the building and go into town and find uh, a place to have uh, lunch. But the uh, event comes, each person, each couple, uh, the husband and the wife will receive the workbook. And the nice thing about this is it's not a, well, you sit there and listen to a lecture and you mm -hmm. fill in the blanks. It's not that kind of a thing. There's just so many more resources in here. Well, in the workbook itself, I was commenting yeah. beforehand, this is no uh, just standard black and white cheap notebook this or workbook. This is very well done here. They have produced some wonderful materials. It has much more information in here than is presented at the workshop yeah. even. Now, i just show you one thing for, uh, to help understand how beneficial this is. It's not just a passive experience. Mm -hmm. Actually, when, they, when we're listening to the seminar, they actually pause and you stop, and it asks you questions. The first session is, is about just what God's purpose is and plan is for marriage. And to just give you just an example, our folks would appreciate sure. knowing how the interaction works. Uh, that one of the things uh, you, with the pause, the first one you'd say, well, what reason, what was the reason you got married? Mm -hmm. And to give some suggestions. And, and then that session would end up with, um, well, what are some things that we need to work on? And it gives you time right then just to talk about it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not like, well, we get this information and then we go home and hopefully we'll talk about things. Yeah. It's right there at the event. Hmm. That's great. So. So the event does offer a lot of time to talk. If couples are coming in and needing to talk to someone else, is that um, available during the weekend? Um, well, it is available. It's the, the event is really not designed for interaction with other couples, that okay. sort of thing, but uh, staff, the church people are there, mm -hmm. are, are willing and, and, uh, and uh, available to have okay. some more personal time. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was telling Hannah beforehand, I thought the neat thing about this um, particular video um, supplement too is that it, it has a, a wide variety of um, well-known pastors and people that are, are teachers on there and it's not just one standard voice you're going to hear you're going to hear from a lot of different um, people absolutely I share with the some of the uh, speakers here they're listed at the back of this workbook and they could also go online hmm. folks who are interested in learning more about this could go to our church website and find links there more information as well as just faithbaptistunited.com yes. yes and uh, could go right to artofmarriage.com mm -hmm. and uh, find out all kinds of information but the speakers are listed some well-known people body bockham a lot of folks are yeah. are familiar with him and brian carter and uh, Wayne Grudem, just a whole uh, host of people that contribute to the uh, conference. Hmm. Well, Pastor, we thank you for being on today and letting us know um, about this great event coming up. Well, thank you for having us. Maybe you know someone out there or a couple out there that could benefit. Like you saw on the screen, you can go to faithbaptistelighted.com to find out more information. Registration, register by February 15th. That's $50 a couple. All right, Mark, Jennifer, what a wonderful event. We're going to throw it back to you. Well, thank you, Zach and Hannah. Well, something special is airing on our sister station right now, WOSN. All throughout the high school basketball season, it's called Throwback 44, and it will take you back to some of the happy, the tense, and the fun basketball days in the past few years. Throwback 44 is back again. Yeah, absolutely. We started this last year and had such a great reception for it. Brought it back with some new games this year. And, you know, we, we've got a good archive, a good library of former games that aired at TV 44 going back to the early 80s or the late 80s all the way up to the present day. And this year, this season, we kind of looked more at some games from the late 90s, the early part of the, the 2000s, and really found some, some classic games, some gems, and some 
familiar faces that uh, maybe you forgot that, oh yeah, he coached <laughs> there. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that kid, we, we played together. I think I even saw the name LeBron James listed as one of the points of one of the games coming up. Absolutely, one of the throwback games this year is uh, from uh, the 2003 season with uh, LeBron and uh, going up against Ottawa Glendorf for that regional final game. Of course, OG and Akron St. Vincent St. Mary's had some great matchups for a three year span, the last two years mm -hmm. of LeBron's high school career and then the, the first year here's in the NBA when OG finally beat Akron St. Vincent St. Mary's. We'll look at the regional final from 2003, LeBron's senior year. Of course, you had the Pulitz twins at Ottawa Glendorf. <laughs> Just a fantastic sold out game up at Toledo. People still talk about the atmosphere of that contest. Wow, so it started earlier this month, every Monday, at 8 o'clock yeah, on every WOSN. Monday at 8 o'clock on WOSN. And looking at the, the end of the schedule for the end of January and February, you can see St. John's New Knoxville game down at New Knoxville from 1997. And both of those teams were state ranked at that time. And then we've got a, a girls game between Bluffton and Corey Rawson from 1998. Katie Motter, huge game, mm -hmm. huge career. Of course, she went on to play at Ohio State and in the mm -hmm. WNBA. Just one of her many I thrilling games. Always loved games. watching her play. It just was, it was beautiful to watch her play, her talent. It was very evident. Absolutely. I mean, she, she brought in fans that weren't necessarily girls basketball fans to, to watch her and the Bluffton Lady Pirates play. We've also got some good playoff games on the schedule as well. You're going to want to catch that every Monday night at 8 on WOSN. Make sure you can see the complete schedule at WTLW.com. Like he said, the games are airing on WOSN, which is available to all antenna viewers and most viewers on area cable networks. If you can't find it, just give us a call. And some more great programming to share with you coming up in February. Apologetic speaker Alex McFarland and one more re-air of the OMEA District 3 Honors Festival. Be sure to read the detailed articles on both in the latest Take One newsletter scheduled to arrive in mailboxes this week. Also in the February newsletter, the inspiring story that we first brought you here on Faith and Friends. Cancer survivor Missy Gandy. Read about her uphill battle and how she climbed it all the way with Christ, today giving him all the glory for her miraculous recovery. Now it's time to talk food during the Lost Creek Health and Rehabilitation sponsored food segment. This week, Zach is tackling one, if not the most famous national food holidays, or at least that's what I'm being told, it's National Corn Chip Day. Zach, take it away. Thank you, Mark. Well, January 29th is National Corn Chip Day. It's National Corn Chip Day. And while we realize it's very easy, to maybe go out to the store and buy many varieties of corn chips, we decided to see just how difficult it would be to make our own. This is a three-part process that we're going to engage in. It's making the dough, making corn tortillas, and then, of course, making the corn chips. And I think Andy and Jennifer are up for the challenge today, We're guys. engaging in something. This <laughs> sounds like a long-term <laughs> relationship really that we're having with the corn well, tortillas. When you consider the fact you walk down the food aisle and you have so many types of corn chips to choose from. There are a lot. I mean, this is a big deal to be making our own corn chips, even though it seems simple. We can simple, go into business, Faith and Friends really corn is, chips. It really is, but we could. So we'll have to see how they taste here shortly. But Selling first, for a dollar a chip. Did you hear the three-part process? I wasn't listening. Well, this, we're going to use a recipe. Okay, I was, the I was caught up on engaged. The, the recipe is from leangreenbean.com, which is kind of cool. Lean green beans. Yeah. So there's green beans in these chips. No, but, you know, at the website. <laughs> Lean green beans. So three ingredients are needed for the dough. That's where we're going to start. You guys ready? Three ready. ingredients. Let's okay. go. All right. One, two, I don't three. Think so. What? <laughs> no, that's not right. right. First, masa harina. Is that related to the Gamesa company that makes the amazing pancake mix out of this Mexico? This is one cup. I, don't, I have no idea about that. But this is one cup that we're going to start with. And then we're going to throw in some hot water and salt. So really, we're talking, you know, water is so that's a kind of a half cup. I know how to add. You know Thank that you. you need more than one? Is that how it works? If Nathan was here, he'd be telling us about semicircles and <laughs> kinds of things. He's very math mathematical. All right. Water? All right, flour. How much water do we need? We need a, th or a, a half to a third three-fourths cup of hot you. water. Don't you need an exact amount? Um, you know, we're experimenting today. Oh. Okay. So That's so one half going with to the three-quarter cup. We're going to see how the half works. Okay. So it mixes up, and then we're a half teaspoon of salt, Andy. Where's my whisk? Well, you don't measure a teaspoon with a whisk. And we forgot our... Oh, my. <laughs> we, That's a half teaspoon we, right there. We forgot oh, our... Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Bam! <measuring> spoon. <laughs> we have no measuring spoon today. So I have a hand. That's... Close enough. What is this for? This is not one of our ingredients. Well, that's you dip not, the chips not yet this? to be used. Oh. I mean, that's oil. You said three ingredients, Zach. That, and do you remember what they were? Salt. We did the salt. I think we need a little the more water. water. And, and the, the flour. flour. Let's add a little bit more water in here. I'm not going to pour this in my hand. 
And you can see it is a little bit dry here, so they're going to add a little more water. When can I use this? Jennifer, get down and dirty and just use your hands in the, in the flour. It's okay. going to mix better. There we go. Oh, Andy, you and the cutting utensils. You're the one that provides them. <laughs> How's that shaping up there? Uh, still a little need dry? Need some more water? Still, just a tad bit, just a tiny bit. That's a okay. tad. That is an exact tad. <laughs> Let me put my so foil we're, back we're on the salt. So we're going to sell Faith and Friends corn chips, and we're also going to sell Faith and we're Friends We're opening a restaurant Andy, here. At Andy I would love to open a restaurant, except I don't want to do all the work spoons. that goes into it. <laughs> you want to have a restaurant with no work. Right. I just want the food okay. that I can eat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going too fast. Jennifer. Oh, my. What's wrong? Well, Jennifer skipped this. Well, went I right ahead with the next step and rolled it into a ball. That is our next oh, step after man. we mix up. The dough. Stop working <laughs> forward. Smash You're going to roll it into a ball just like that. Okay, I'm just, here. It needs to be a perfect, perfect here, ball. Take a, it's no a longer perfect, perfect ball. What are we doing? Well, roll it smashing. into a ball. One ball. <laughs> one ball or multiple balls? Didn't he say smash? Isn't this, wait, are we making more than one this with balls. the ingredients? We need eight. We need oh, eight. We need what happened eight. to the smashing? We need eight balls. That was uh, way off. Course. Okay, oh. you roll balls and I'll move into the next step. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna roll eight of them. They have to okay. be perfect. So quickly do that. So Jennifer, what are you doing here? So you, quickly. Go faster. You seem to know. Be ready. Well, I have a ball here, so I'm ready to move on to the next okay, step. She's looking for it. her tortilla do maker, have, which she left at home. Look what we have here, parchment paper. Okay. Okay. That's good for freezing fruit as well. So we're gonna pull some of that out. I'll let you do that. And you're going to place it between, you're going to take your ball, let's see if we can show this here, place it between the two sides of the paper. Oh, I should probably have a second piece then? Well, I thought you were going to fold that over, but we can go with the second piece. And we're going to flatten this dough between the two pieces of paper. Here's the flattening part. Oh, I enjoyed my portion. Can you use this to flatten it? That's, yes. All right, are there any tips or tricks or how flat do we want it to be? I suppose that's how flat you want your corn chips. Paper thin. <laughs> you need thin corn chips, right? <laughs> you can also use a rolling pen as opposed to a glass plate. That's what I always flatten stuff with. <laughs> you could throw it on the floor, stand on it. Oh, we sh there we go. Yeah. Stand on it. Look at that. that. Nice oh. mini tortilla. So now what we have is a little tortilla. Okay. Right? Look at that. We created that. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful from three ingredients. So we're going to drop it into this hot plant pan here and we're going to let it cook. <laughs> no, I don't think that's yet. We're going to let it cook and get warm here. Can you guess what we're going to do after we uh, roast our tortilla? I cannot add marshmallows. We're going to cut it up. <laughs> we're going to cut it up. So you could do a tortilla and Make tortillas, well, or you sure. can make them into chips if you want. Same type of. I mean, essentially chips consistency. Are, yeah. No, well, tortillas how's it, how's are soft. It doing? I don't think our thing's on real high here. That was not one of our steps, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't told to turn it on. <laughs> All right. Turn on your up your stove if you're going to. Okay. Right. What are you looking for back there? I was going to pull our final product out. I don't think it's cooking very quickly. So what do we do after we're finished with these cooking? What would be the next step? I bet I know. This? Well, oh, it's already, the lid's already off. The unveil's been done. Oh. Well, Andy's cutting up his own size chips. What we're going to do... These are not triangular chips. ...are cut up your chips, and we're going to lay them in oil to cook. I think we just... Here, <laughs> let's brush some oil on. Okay. Where do you want me to put it? Put it in, the, put it in there. The great thing about cooking is... You can do whatever it's you an want. experiment. We're trying new things all the time. So you're going to base these with oil so that when we throw them in the pan or on the pan, they will thicken up and get hard, right? There's the recipe in case you missed it. So there we go. We're going to spray the olive oil on there as opposed to basting salt. it, and we're going to sprinkle it with salt. 400 like degrees salt? at 10 minutes should get you right about where you want to be. Now, yeah, Andy, that Jennifer, is gluten-free salt. Jennifer, you were saying salt. that this stoneware you're putting it on Baked better? Is that what we're? Um, no, stoneware. Bakes worse. I, well, bakes stoneware worse. bakes quite well for many things. But um, not the tortilla chips. Are you going to juggle inside? I I think that um, I think that using a a. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. 
Wow. We're moving on I'm to our final product. Here. Oh, look at these. This is what I'm here for. <laughs> and these are actually a little thicker. So if you like your thicker corn chips, and these, these are be great for dipping into salsa. Of and notice these are on a metal tray. Yes, these were on the metal tray, and so they they taste really good. They're chewy. Are they supposed to be chewy? Well, not ideally, no. But that's going to depend mm -hmm. on. They do taste good. How long you bake them? They would be great for dipping because they're mm -hmm. sturdy. <laughs> sturdy. And so this is our attempt at home making corn tortilla chips. A little thicker than you'd guess, but you can see here. I got a thin one. Yeah. We're going to have all of this ingredients, all of the directions on our website, Faith and Friends. WTLW.com, mm. so you can find out all of the things that we may have forgotten to do. Including juggling. On there. <laughs> We're going to keep eating corn tortilla chips. So we'll throw it back to you, Mark, with a little bit more of a serious challenge for our viewers. Oh. Thank you, Zach. Because we consider it so important, we want to once again take a moment to pinpoint the 2015 Faith Challenge target areas. Earlier this month, year-end giving set statements were sent to all who donated to TV44 in 2014. Included in those statements was an invitation to commit to the 2015 Faith Challenge. You'll see information about it in the February Take One newsletter. Once again, here are the five focus points. Read the Bible daily, daily prayer time, watch for divine appointments, be open to God's leading, and forgive others. I encourage you to pray about challenging yourself to commit to these five principles. You'll hear more about each one in the weeks and months to come this year. One of those ways to look for divine appointments are those people that do have many divine appointments or coaches. We have a great opportunity for coaches coming up this Saturday, January 31st, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. over at the Lima Community Church Access Building. It is a retreat, a conference, a seminar. The food is free, but to have enough, we need to know you're coming. It's for any coach at any level, or if you just really want to know more about leadership, you can email me, aylinchfca.org. Looking forward to that one. Dan Webster, he's not local, right? He's Correct. coming in from elsewhere. He was a pastor on. at the Willow Creek Church in Chicago, which is this mega church, and mm -hmm. he since has formed his own leadership uh, group. Does a great job. Before we go, some much-deserved thank yous going out to the hundreds of you who have committed to standing with TV44 financially in 2015. Our giving campaign runs through the end of the month, and we have reached over $199,000 <laughs> so, of the $200,000 so goal. Close. We've got Mrs. Ray Lindemuth from Wapakoneta. Thank you very much. Mr. and Mrs. William and Deborah Girding from Columbus Grove. Thanks for getting on board. And Miss Barbara, Barbara Clark from up in Finley. So many people from all around our viewing area team up with TV44 and make such a difference in the lives of everyone who can just flip through the channels and find the good news that God brings through this station. We're so thankful that you're a part of it. You know, donating is simple, safe, and we are so grateful for it. Here's how you can find us. Visit our website anytime, WTLW.com, and you can donate safely there, or come see us in person at 1844 Beatty Road in Lima. Or call us between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Now, another convenient monthly giving option is automatic monthly withdrawal. I just signed up for this just a couple weeks ago. Should have done it a long time ago. Give us a call. Send us an email at contact at WTLW.com. We've got a simple form for you to fill out, and then you can continue partnering with us financially simply all year long. Continue. That brings us to the end of our show. We have a special musical ending, though. Mark's going to sing a solo. No, not really. <laughs> that's not going to happen. But before we go, <laughs> uh, one more look at our verse, John 6, 50 and 51. But here's the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. It's better than corn chips. We thank Jesus <laughs> for being the bread. And it is. Those were good, though. I enjoyed them. But now we leave you with Timothy, Car Timothy Carter. MC Righteous as he led the Martin Luther King Jr. Awards Banquet in praise to God. Enjoy this. We'll see you next week. Be worthy of the high praise. Now, Jesus.